Hey, Rick. Hey, Megan. Happy Tuesday after Labor Day. I know. I feel like we've already got a head start on a short week. We do. You bet. Well, we've got a couple of escrows open today here in the office, right and uh, it's a good way to start the week. And um, I just wanted to talk about some trends that I'm seeing in offers that I'm receiving mm -hmm. and how to properly structure your offer in this specific market. Mm -hmm. So first I have to tell you what specific market I'm referring to, okay? So you have to remember, I know people are probably sick of hearing it, but let's go over it one more time for the millionth time. The beginning of the year, interest rates were about 3%. Now they're over, what are they, 6% today, something uh, like that? Mid, mid sixes. Mid six percent. Okay. So <clears throat> for every, you know, one point increase in the interest rate, people's payments go up about 10%. So give or take a little bit here or there. That's mm -hmm. the gist of it. Mm -hmm. And so people have to understand that it's, you know, relative. Pricing right. at the beginning of the year is not the same pricing now. Does right. it mean that prices have gone down? Yeah. They have they to affect affordability, yeah, they're not going to be the same prices that they were at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's hard to figure out when you see a house you like, what kind of offer should you write? Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to get caught up. Nobody wants to pay too much, right? Right. Um, and so people, I think, have a real fear of paying too much because the sort of turbulence in the rates and that sort of thing. So <clears throat> regarding a couple of things. Timing the market, number one. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, you cannot time the market. There's no That's true. one shoe fits all. The timing of the market is whatever works for you in the circumstance that you're in. Mm -hmm. that At you, that moment. Yeah, you'd make a happy purchase. So, yeah. so it's not like, oh, this is a good time. That's a bad time. Now, for me, I said it before. This is my favorite time of year to purchase mm -hmm. because the houses have maybe been sitting on the market all summer. And you might have a little bit of flexibility, but that timing for me, what is good for the market may not be for a young family looking to enroll their kids in school. The perfect timing for them would have been the beginning of summer. Mm -hmm. So now we understand the perspective of timing the market. It's for each individual, right? Right. So once you find a house that will work for you, as far as the location, that's the number one thing, because we can't change the location. The condition of the house, we have to know what we're getting ourselves into. Right. And of course, the price. If all those three things fit your criteria and you want to make an offer, what do you do? You don't want to be caught with your hands, you know, touching the stove. You want to make an intelligent offer. Well, first, you have to look at that individual listing because a lot like timing, there's no one size fits all for offer making. You have to look at that individual listing. Here's a couple of key things. Did it just go on the market? Is this the first or the second weekend of it just going on the market? Number one. So make an observation. Um, number two, call the listing agent, find out if there are any offers and see if they'll share with you if they're over or under asking price. Yeah. They probably won't tell you if they're under and to see what kind of ind individual needs the seller might have. Okay. So kind of feel it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then number three, yeah, you can look at the comps in the neighborhood, but here's where it also gets really, really sticky. And this is not one size fits all. Mm -hmm. So um, I have a listing right now. I'm going to give you an example. And I put it on the market and I'm going to use fake numbers and names. Okay. I put it on the market for 900,000. The first weekend like I got offers at 900,000, but the seller wanted to wait and see what was going to happen. And um, I couldn't really say yes or no, don't see. I just said, here are the choices that you have with this. It's the first weekend. Um, it was a hot listing. Maybe it'll be 905. It's not going to be 950, you know, Here's right. my opinion of what you should do. And then, you know, of course you can make an educated, sorry, I love those exhausts. I don't know if you heard that. Um, you can make an educated opinion. Well, um, educated choice. 
Well, uh, from there, the first weekend, an, a house closed escrow down the street. And that house, now here are the factors. This is where we get really into the weeds. Was listed by a company called Open Window, okay? It's an online, it's not really called Open Window, but I'm using aliases, mm -hmm. okay? Sure. It's an online buyer. And typically, in general, Open Window's houses are priced a little high to begin with, okay? And so... They listed that house in March when the stuff was hitting the fan. So this is when you look at these comps and you're, and you want to, you want to buy a house. You want to make this work. So don't look at comps that are weird. Look at real comps, right? So this house had been listed for a little bit too much money to begin with, had sat on the market, was listed in March when things got pretty turbulent and ended up selling at, uh, 50,000 less than what my listing is listed for, but I'm getting offers at my asking price and over, right? Mm -hmm. But then I'd get another offer that was for 50,000 less. And they said, well, open windows listing just sold for 50,000 less. So yours should sell for 50,000, yes. And I'm afraid that that is not gonna get you the house that you want. That you have to really be able to, if you're going to look at these comps like that, you need to take in all considerations. And I feel bad for these buyers because they're not even going to get a counter offer. So they're concerned about what to offer right now, mm -hmm. how to structure their offer. We already know there's not one size shoe that fits all. We talked about that in a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. They really, if they're going to look at the comps, they really need to look at it a little bit more intelligently if they want to uh, get a counter offer because the seller, like I said, a $50,000 less when they have asking price and over is just silliness and they're not going to get right. the house. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. Ultimately, so kind of need to be successful, but that's not going to do it. Well, I'm seeing some of that too on my side where you know, buyers are confused about what to offer, but to your point though, you've got to really reach out to that listing agent and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Also, to your point, if, if that listing is at nine hundred thousand and they've got offers at that or higher, don't offer eight fifty. You're not going to get the house. Don't offer mm -hmm. less because they're not going to accept it. Right. Exactly. It's pretty Just, simple. Yeah, it's pretty simple. We want everybody to be successful. Not everybody can buy the same house, but mm -hmm. you know, this is like it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. So you have to make good decisions and conserve your energy so that you can eventually get the house that you want. Good, so that's, there sure. good stuff. It got muted for a minute because somebody was calling. Even though I have my phone on, do not disturb. So that's my advice for the week. Do you have anything else to add to that? No, I think it's spot on. I think we're seeing a lot of that right now. And um, our market's still competitive. You know, we're not seeing 10 or 20 offers. We're, still, we're seeing two or three offers sometimes. So you're going to be still in the ballpark. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not seeing a point where sellers are desperate. They're not, they're not like, hey, I got to sell like next week, I'll knock 50 grand off. I'm not seeing that either. So there's right. no, there's no distress. So, so, so homeowners or home sellers are not distressed. Yeah. They're not distressed sales. And right. so they've got the, the time that they need to, to take the best offer. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Good. Well, Rick, thanks for joining me today. I hope that you have a good rest of your week. I'm and uh, I hope that things are, how'd the market start out today? <laughs> not not a good day in the market hey friday was good uh today took it all back and then some so we don't know it's the market is wonky right now because Powell, our, our fed chairman made some comments last week at the uh their annual meeting in wyoming and his comment was there's still more pain to come but well, that's hard to read because the, the market shows that the inflation is kind of leveled out now we're not really in fear of this hyperinflation but somehow Powell doesn't seem to want to acknowledge that and so that kind of, you know, there's some fear in the market with that. So, it's, so it's a fairly light week this week in, uh, in data for economic data, but we'll see. It'll settle down eventually. Yeah. You know, we'll send it eventually find its place and be pretty stable. But this week, you know, starting off a little bit tough, but it'll, it'll settle down. Yeah. Well, good. Well, I know you watch the rates all day and the reports and everything. So you know when to time your rate lock. So we appreciate you. We know you're doing your best. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Appreciate you as well. All right. I'll see you next right. week. Okay, see you later.
Take care.